What's up everyone? Vinny Muso from Muso Athletics here for day 18 of our 30 days of force. Uh, today we'll be talking about tendon stiffness. Uh, so if you remember in yesterday's video, we kind of teased it a little bit, you know, what tendon stiffness is, or, you know, we mentioned the fact that we were going to talk about it today. Um, so we will go into more detail, um, you know, what tendon stiffness is, you know, and the, the importance of it, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, this, this uh, second 10 day cycle that we're talking about, about our force redirection. Um, so before we go into, into tendon, tendon stiffness, um, uh, I want to briefly, you know, just briefly kind of almost kind of review. Uh, we've talked about this, one of these concepts uh, before in a previous video. Uh, but if we look at our amortization phase of our uh, stretch shortening cycle, um, again, our stretch shortening cycle is kind of, it's the, the overall that, that V we've been talking about, um, you know, that, that force absorption to force production where the, the stretch part of the stretch shortening cycle is kind of that, you know, absorption or the, the lengthening of the muscles, um, you know, stretching of the muscles. And then the, the shortening part of the stretch shortening cycle is the, the contraction of the muscles and the, and the force production part, um, of that, of that cycle. Um, and the, the transition from our absorption to our production or our stretching to our shortening in the stretch shortening cycle is the amortization phase. So that's that, that split second, that microsecond where we go from force absorption to force production. Uh, and there's really, there's two big uh, mechanisms at play uh, during uh, our amortization phase. The first one uh, are muscle spindles. Uh, if you remember, we talked about uh, muscle spinders back in, I believe it was day six uh, so if you haven't uh, taken a look at that video, I suggest going back and while you're at it, if you haven't seen the videos leading up to this day, I suggest starting back at the beginning, you know, just taking it one day at a time and, and looking at all the videos again, because they, a lot of them build off of one another, you know, progressing forward. Um, so again, we went over it in detail uh, about our muscle spindles, uh, just a quick, quick review of it. And again, won't go into too much detail. Um, but our muscle spindles are kind of like a, like a built-in injury prevention mechanism that our body has where when uh, a muscle kind of lengthens uh, rapidly, uh, there's a signal, you know, there's, there's nerves and, and sensors in your, in your muscles that send a signal uh, to your spinal cord and that causes the uh, muscle that's innervated to reflexively uh, contract and, and shorten. Um, so that's... That's really the first uh, first mechanism at play during that um, that amortization phase where we switch from force absorption into force production, uh, and that mechanism we can view that more as a as a physiological uh, mechanism, uh, meaning that it's really solely based on you know your your anatomy and physiology, uh, you know brains involved, you know the the nervous system of the, the brain is involved, spinal cord is involved, uh, muscles involved, so. We can view it that way. Um, so that's our first mechanism. And then when we go into our second mechanism, which is the, the topic, you know, the, the main focus of today, uh, is again, is, is tendon stiffness. Um, so we can, we can view the, the tendon stiffness part of our amortization phase as more of a, uh, more of a kind of like in like a physics point of view, um, where this is more, number one is more anatomy physiology. Number two, we can almost view it more as uh, as a, physics standpoint, um, because there is, you know, mechanical energy, you know, elastic stored energy, um, that comes into play here. Um, so the, those are, you know, the kind of the differences between the two. One is more anatomy and physiology. One is more kind of physics and, and mechanical. Um, but again, we talked about yesterday, um, you know, using the term, uh, stiffness, uh, again, a lot of times stiffness kind of gets, um, kind of gets a, a negative, you know, there's a negative connotation to stiffness. You know, we always, you know, if, if you say, you know, you're, you're tight or you, you're usually saying, you know, you're stiff and you're sore. So, you know, anytime we, we kind of throw the word stiffness out there, we, we tend to think of it as, as a, as a negative thing, you know, not a good thing. But when we're looking at, you know, the overall concept of force and, you know, transitioning from our force absorption to our force production, stiffness is actually uh, it's, it's a good thing. You know, it's, it's actually something we want, you know, not so much in, in the muscles themselves, you know, we want our muscles to, to move freely and, and not be restricted in any way. 
But if we're looking at our, our tendons, which again are what, what connect our, our muscle to bone and, you know, really kind of the, you know, the, the foundation and the transition point when our muscles are trying to move our bones, you know, cause that's what our muscles do is they, they move our, our skeletal system. Um, but when we're looking at that particular junction, that, that tendon, uh, we actually want some stiffness there. Uh, and really the easiest way uh, to kind of understand why, you know, tendon stiffness uh, is so important is just think about a rubber band. Okay. So if we look at a, at a rubber band example, so let's say that I have two rubber bands that are the exact same length. Uh, the difference being one is kind of like a fresh brand new rubber band that's still, you know, kind of stiff and, and tight. And the second being kind of like a worn out uh, rubber band that is, you know, it's, it's kind of lost some of its snap, you know? So if we take those two rubber bands, again, the length being the, exactly the same, let's say I, I pull both of those back to equal, equal lengths, you know? So I, I hold part of it on the bottom and then I pull one strand of that rubber band up and I pull both rubber bands up to the exact same height. So if I let go of both of those, you know, you could probably imagine which rubber band is going to snap harder. And that is the, the first rubber band we talked about, that rubber band that was still, you know, kind of fresh and new and, and still had some, some stiffness and, and tightness to it. So, you know, that is, that's the easiest way to kind of understand, you know, why tendon stiffness is so important because our tendons in that example, uh, you know, work very similar to the rubber band. Um, you know, we want, uh, those, those tendons to be stiff because it, you know, allows them to store more elastic energy. Um, again, back to the rubber, rubber band example, that first rubber band I pulled up, the, the stiffer and tighter one has more elastic energy than that second, you know, more worn out rubber band, you know, in order for me to, to, you know, get the same type of, you know, potential elastic energy in that second rubber band that's more worn out, I would have to, you know, pull it further. Okay. And if we're talking about that in more of the concept of, you know, context of the human body, that would be someone. So if your, you know, tendons are kind of looser and not as stiff, then you're relying more, you know, on your muscles to either having to move more, you know, have more range of motion to get into different angles and different positions. And a lot of times what will happen, you know, if that is the case is our body will get into, you know, less, um, less efficient positions, uh, to move from. Uh, but I won't go too much into detail about that um, because there is, um, you know, we can go, you know, really further into that topic. And I kind of want to hold that for another video when talking about um, flexibility kind of as it relates to, uh, you know, tendon stiffness. But, you know, main, main takeaways, we, we want to view tendon stiffness not as a bad thing, but a good thing because it, you know, allows us to store more, uh, mechanical energy, more elastic energy, um, which helps us be overall more explosive, you know, cause you can think about it this way. So if we have our two, you know, the two mechanisms in play during that amortization phase, you know, if we have one that's efficient and one that's inefficient, you know, overall as a whole, the, the body's not going to be able to, you know, transition from force absorption to force production as efficiently as if both of these systems were working, you know, ideally. So let's say we have someone, you know, who does have, you know, kind of loose tendons, um, you know, again, tendons that, that aren't really stiff or rigid. Um, uh, that person is not going to be as efficient uh, as transferring their force absorption to force production. They're not going to be as efficient as someone who has, who does have tendon stiffness because that first person is relying solely really just on their muscle spindles. So kind of that physiological reaction where the muscles will lengthen and then reflexively contract to produce force. So if we just have that system working and our second one is not as efficient, then that first person is not going to be, you know, as efficient or explosive as our second person who does have the stiffer tendons where that person gets the benefit of both their muscle spindles and, um, the, you know, the elastic energy that is stored in their tendons because they are stiffer. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, again, you know, the, the main takeaway is, you know, stiffness often gets a, a negative connotation, but in, in the, the, the context of force redirection, you know, it's, it's actually something we want. We want those tendons to be, 
you know, kind of, you know, stiff. And, and I don't mean stiff as in tight. Uh, I mean stiff as in, you know, they're, they're able to, I guess a way to view it is to, they can absorb force very efficiently. And this will kind of transition into our, into our next bullet point here, where we talk about being more efficient uh, in absorption. So if you remember, uh, we talked about back during our, our force absorption um, phase, you know, the first 10 days where we talked about of this 30 days, uh, we talked about the importance of rate of force development or how, uh, you know, how quickly can you absorb force? Because you know, we talked about ground contact time being ground contact times, uh, being very quick uh, in athletics, you know, with um, two footed movements around 0.2 seconds. And when we're talking about one footed movements, it gets closer to point one seconds. So during that, we want to absorb force as quickly as we can. So we can spend as much of that short amount of time on the ground producing force okay because if we can produce force for longer we're going to be able to produce more and be more explosive so if our time during those ground contact times is wasted trying to absorb force then we're not going to be as efficient and what happens when we have tendon stiffness is we become more efficient in absorption because it allows us to absorb force quicker okay because instead of having to you know maybe sink lower in the movement you know if we don't have uh, stiff tendons, if we have kind of looser tendons, then we're probably going to sink lower into our movement. Um, so let's use the, the, the two footed jump as an example, you know, because we've used that as, as an example before. You know, so going into a two foot jump, you know, on the basketball court where you're going to a one two stop, if I have kind of looser tendons, you know, in my knees and, you know, my Achilles, you know, are, are, are you know, very common tendon that we talk about. If I have looser tendons, when I go into that one two step, and try to absorb quickly, it's going to take me a little bit longer to absorb that force because I'm sinking a little bit lower into that movement. Um, again, since my tendons are a little bit looser, they need a little bit more um, time and distance and range of motion to fully absorb that force. And you know, very, we're talking about microseconds here, but in the context of, you know, quick ground contact times, you know, those microseconds really, really add up. So someone with looser, tendons is going to take a little bit longer to absorb force and they're going to have to go into a little bit deeper range of motion um, and that combination makes us a little bit less efficient in being able to produce force again because since it's, ta it's taken us longer to absorb the force we have less time to produce force compared to someone who has stiffer tendons and they're able to absorb force quicker okay so that's that's a, a, a huge takeaway, you know, when we're talking about uh, tendon stiffness. Um, and again, our, our tendon stiffness uh, can be worked, you know, through our, through our isometric uh, movements, which we've talked about, and another concept that, um, that we'll talk about later on as well, okay? But our, you know, our last point, excuse me, our last point here, uh, talking about being more efficient with the transfer of energy, you know, this just plays off, you know, our point here where we've been talking about being more efficient in absorbing force. Okay. So if we're more efficient in absorbing force, you know, we spent less time, less distance, um, uh, having to absorb force, then we have now more time to produce force. And that's just going to make our, our overall transfer from force absorption to force production that much more efficient. Again, talking about, you know, micros, you know, extremely, you know, quick, uh, quick times here, but again, those, those times are very important and can definitely add up. Okay. So, and that was our, our main takeaway. Um, again, if it, if it gets a little confusing, uh, during today's video, just think of that rubber band example. Again, the rubber band example, uh, we have two rubber bands, you know, one being kind of fresh, brand new out of the box, still has all its, you know, tightness, stiffness, and snappiness to it. And then the second one not being, you know, kind of being more, you know, worn out and looser than that first one. If I pull both those rubber bands up to the same height, which one's going to, you know, snap harder, or produce more force? You know, it's that first one, that tighter one. So that's the same concept we can think about with tendon stiffness. All right. So that's it for today's video. Uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, share the video. And if you haven't yet, uh, take a look at Amuso Athletics on Instagram for more training content. See you guys tomorrow.